Hello there, welcome back to the new video. Today in this video, we'll be looking into the last algorithm that this repo mentioned for training your sentence embeddings in an unsupervised fashion. We'll quickly touch upon that. In the meantime, if you haven't really followed the series and you're interested in training your sentence embeddings model in an unsupervised fashion, because again, preparing the data for training your buy encoders is a cumbersome and hard process. And I know you agree on this with me. So if that's the case, directly head down to the comment section and I have linked all the videos that I've created while doing a walkthrough of the Sentence Transformers GitHub repo where I've covered TSDAE, SimCSE, CT, CT in batch, mass language modeling, GenQ and for today, we'll be touching upon the final algorithm that they've mentioned which is GPL that stands for Generative Pseudo Labeling for Unsupervised Domain Adaptation of Dense Retrieval. So this technique builds on top of GenQ and improves it significantly is what they claim. So let's directly jump onto the paper to see what they propose. So this is from researchers from Ubiquitous Knowledge Processing Lab, University of Darmstadt, University of Waterloo and Hugging Face. So let's jump onto the method that they propose. Okay. So again, our assumption is that like we have a lot of unlabeled data present for a particular domain on which we're trying to train our sentence similarity model. Now this data could be at sentence level, paragraph level, depending on what the deployment scenario looks like. So for now, consider these two paragraphs, which is P1, P2 till PK. Now for every paragraph, you pass it through a query generation model, which is nothing but a T5 model that generates a possible question for which the answer lies in this passage. And similarly, you would pass P2 and you would get another question for which the answer lies in P2. So now this is done three times, which means for every passage, you generate Q1, Q2 and Q3. Now once your queries or questions are generated per passage, you do a reverse mining and use any dense retrieval out of the box and pass this query to it. And from all the passages that you have in your data set, you retrieve top K of them. So for every query, you retrieve top K passages. So similarly for Q2 and Q3, you'll have different set of top Ks. And please note, this is just for P1, right? For P1, you got three queries. And for each of these queries, you got top K passages. So now clearly, based on the accuracy of dense retrieval and the pre-trained embeddings model that you use, the quality of top K would highly vary. But again, that's okay, right? Because essentially we are looking to create a negative set for a particular query because we already know what a positive set look like because that is what we initially fed to the system. Now we are trying to get onto what are negative passages for which the query cannot be answered, but the similarity seems to be really high. In the final step of this pipeline, you use a cross encoder as a re-ranking system that will help you score the passage and the query by attending to each other. So I'm not sure if you know what cross encoder is, but it's usually like the NLI model, like one model where you give in sentence one and sentence two and use the consolidated representation to either push them towards one or push them towards zero. So with that objective, these models are trained. NLI is one of them, which is, which is natural language inference. So here again, you pass the query and the original passage, you get a certain score, let's say 10.3. And for all the remaining passages that you retrieved via the negative mining step for a given query, you pass them through cross encoder one by one and get their relevant score. And this entire step is repeated for every passage that you have in your data set. So talking about little more specifics, for every passage, they generate three queries. So this is something that you should note using the T5 model. Then for each of these generated queries, they retrieve 50 negative passages. So the step that you saw as part of negative mining, right? So this count is nothing but 50 per query. So which means for the original passage, since you had three queries for every you were having 50, so 50 into three total 150 passages is what you retrieve from the original passage. Okay. And once that is done, so they experimented with BM25 based retrieval, but eventually they found like the dense retrieval was working slightly better than that. And then you jump on the cross encoder step where they calculate the relevance score for every query and positive pair and query and all the negative pairs, which account for 50 such cases. And you take the difference of this, which they call as Delta. And this loss is what they call as margin MSE loss. Margin means squared error loss. And it looks like this. Okay, so let's try to understand how the delta hat and delta i's are created. So the data set that you've created is in the form of query that you generated through a T5 model, then the positive passage that was originally that was fed to the query generation system, then you mined the negative example through the negative sampling step, and then you calculate the margin that's nothing but difference in the dot product of Q and P plus minus Q and P negative. So this is termed as delta. So you create a data set in this format. So in a batch, if you have, let's say eight samples, you'll have Q again, P positive and 
P negative, this will be the second example, this is the first one, you'll have different margin and so on and so forth till P8. Now if you notice, we are giving soft label to each of these triplets, which is not the case with multiple negative ranking loss. The first difference was there we just have query and positive pairs and the labels that we give is one for this and rest all the negative samples that you create from that batch get a zero. Okay, so in this what you do once this data set is created, you pass it to your encoder system that share weight where this takes in query, this takes in positive passage, this takes in negative passage. You get a pooled representation over here of the vector representations of Q, P positive and P negative. You take the dot product for Q and P positive and also between Q and P negative. Take their difference and that is your delta hat. And this is what you now plug in this equation this one and delta is nothing but something that you already had in the input so you calculate this margin and over iterations you try to minimize this difference so with this model is trying to essentially learn the order in which the negatives can be ranked so there could be something like easy negatives where the difference in the delta is closer to zero whereas for hard negatives this will tend towards infinity so that's the scale or the relationship that we want a model to eventually learn by minimizing on the margin so yeah that's the entire idea that this paper proposes and this improves on the previous one which is gen q and this approach that we discussed is more or less i can say most advanced in whatever paper we have reviewed till now so yeah that's it for this video make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel i'll meet you in the next one bye bye and take care